What's up everybody? It's time to teach you all about how to play the alleged best character in the entire game, Leo. Uh, I'm not going to do a long fancy intro in this tutorial, even though I like making those and I feel it adds something to the experience. Uh, we have a lot to go through when it comes to Leo and it's just going to save me a lot of time in editing if we just jump straight into it. Uh, I just want to mention quickly, I don't know if it's a rule at this point that you have to mention when you make a video on Leo that she's a girl. Uh, but yes, Leo is officially a girl. Leo is short for Eleanor. Um, and I think I just want to mention quickly the reason they um, chose to make Leo uh, so androgynous in this game. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, the developers, when they started making Leo in Tekken 6, uh, wanted to make a character that would be approachable by absolutely any Tekken player. Like something that everybody could like. And so they wanted to make her very easy to use and simultaneously have a lot of depth, which is something I think they really succeeded with. Uh, but they also didn't want people to prefer her, you know, on the basis of uh, I don't want to play like a girl character, I want to play a guy character. So those people would have. Uh, the option of playing Leo, but people who wanted to play more feminine and fe you know, uh, female looking characters would also want to play Leo. One thing that is a little bit interesting, I mean it's not really like that in the West anymore, but here in uh, Asia and in Japan especially, uh, female Tekken players tend to almost exclusively play uh, female characters. Uh, especially ones with like pink ribbons on them and stuff. It's a little bit archaic, but whatever. Uh, we're in here and it's time to talk about Leo. So, uh, I guess uh, one thing we've been doing in these newer tutorials is I just give you a simple little starter kit for uh, block punishment just here in the beginning, uh, get that out of the way, and then we start talking about you know the important parts of the moveset. So for standing 10 frames, Leo has, she has normal jab strings, you know, like 1, 2, but for, uh, let's turn off counter hit so that the damage numbers are correct, but for 10 frames, normally uh, what most people use is 1, 4 which gives you better damage. It is a completely natural combo and a great little high high poking string. Uh, so 1-4 is uh, the standing 10 frames. Then for 13 frames you've got down forward 1-2. Uh, great little move. Uh, spikes, well it doesn't spike, but it knocks your opponent down very close to like your feet like that, meaning that your Oki opportunities are absolutely massive. Um, so great little move. Down forward 1-2. And then for 15 frames, you've got your hop kick, and 15 to 16 frames, depending on range, I guess this is always listed as 15 to 16. The amazing Leo uh, down for two, which is one of your main launchers. But if you really need to reliably punish uh, 15 frames, I think the hop kick is a little bit of a, a more uh, consistent option. Just be aware that for a hop kick, it, it's got slightly below average range. And then for uh, while standing, you've got your amazing new uh, while standing 4 uh, 1 plus 2. This is, I think, by far the most powerful while standing 4, uh, sorry, while standing uh, 11 frame uh, block punisher in the game. It's 11 frames, completely natural. Wall splats, knocks down, gives you really huge damage. I don't know why the developers thought that, you know, an interesting way to boost the uh, relative power of Leo would just be to give her the most massive, like, 11 frame block punisher for while standing, but it's super interesting and it's super super good, it's kind of weird because something this chunky for 11 frames while standing doesn't really exist in Tekken, but Leo has it and it is absolutely amazing, meaning that Leo every time she can block a low, any kind of low, even if she can't launch punish it, she gets premium premium damage, knockdowns and uh, uh, Oki and even a wall splat at certain ranges, so yeah, amazing stuff and then uh, if you need to launch from uh, while standing, I think it's at 16 frames, you get the uh, while standing too. Okay, so that's just, that's not everything in terms of block punishment, obviously, but that's enough to get you started. That's uh, enough to get you, like, uh, you know, out there in the field and to do some games. And we're not going to go into uh, much more depth in terms of punishment right now. So let's jump into the moveset. Uh, like always, I want to start with your favorite mid poke. And with Leo, it's a down forward one, classic. It's got a little bit of a weird animation. Leo starts migrating uh, to uh, the opponent's uh, right uh, over time. But there's nothing really exceptional about it. Uh, it's got very decent range. Um, it doesn't look like it, but it does. Um, like right there, I think, is tip range. Somewhere in... in uh, that. Yeah, that would be tip range for the down forward one. Uh, frame data is very standard, you're only at minus one uh, for the uh, uh, block, 
but you get plus 7 on hit and uh, it comes out at 13 frames. So standard down forward 1, which is great because the standard down forward 1 is mo one of the most important tools and usable tools you can ever apply with your Tekken character. Uh, okay, and then I mentioned you have uh, typical jab strings. You've got 1, 2, and you've got your 1, 4, and then uh, uh, 1, 2, 4 gives you this little uh, tacked on low at the end, which can be a very usable tool. You know, a lot of characters have the ability to tack on a little, little uh, low poke on their jab string, uh, which can kind of telegraphed and kind of predictable, but you can get, w get, get away with it a lot of the time. And then Leo also has these longer extensions uh, to her... Uh, uh, jab strings, uh, but uh, they are mainly used for like uh, wall conversions or when you need to do a uh, lot of damage to the opponent's back and stuff. So I don't think uh, we need to go in too deeply to these, but just be aware that uh, okay, so it's one two one one for the punishable mid and one two one four for the duckable high. Okay, so that's your jab strings and your down forward one. Now, I kind of straight away want to go into, if I'm honest, why I think Leo is considered to be the best character in this game. And, you know, if we should just talk about briefly whether or not she is, I mean, this is uh, very uh, subjective, but Leo is objectively amazingly good, and I don't think it would be odd to place her at the top spot. Uh, she is definitely in anybody's top five if they know what they are talking about. So this is one of the strongest character you're, 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 characters you're ever going to see in Tekken. And I think one of the reasons uh, that is so, the main reason is because of uh, her King K stance and her King K stance mix-ups. So should I go into that right now or should we save that after uh, we do some lows? Yeah, let's do some lows first and then talk about stances. That probably makes more sense. So your main low poke, your favorite low poke is going to be your down four. It's one of those great little uh, low pokes that gives you a, that key, allows you to remain standing and you don't have to go into uh, uh, full crouch. Uh, you've got the down three if you want to go in a full crouch, and then you can do you know your while standing move set. But down four is like your main thing. It, it's got a two extension that is not very good. This is not a natural combo. I think in this game it's still a natural combo on uh, counter hit though. Uh, but the counter hit is not exactly easy to confirm or anything, so uh, use the extension very sparingly. Uh, mainly stick with the down four by itself down three for the crushing and then the other main super super good low that good Leo players players make a lot of use of is uh, this move uh, this is down forward three plus two which is a little bit of an awkward input it's a punching low which is kind of rare but it is uh, evasive it's got good range it gives you a knockdown and good Oki opportunities and so it is a, a great great low and you will see uh, good Leo players make a lot of use of this um, it works especially good at the wall, uh, especially well at the wall, I should say. Thank you to everybody who's been giving me constructive criticism on my English in these uh, videos. I mean, English is my, I guess, my third language at this point because, you know, I, I live in Japan and I speak Japanese mainly every day, but uh, I hope my English is, is good enough that it doesn't cause a distraction. But there you go. So this is just like a main, slightly chunkier, slightly bigger load that, that is going to cause you that uh, knockdown. And then you can go into good oak tools, like you can do a 4 4 3 and uh, stuff like that. So, yeah, that's a, a, a great move. Uh, I guess I can mention here, I like to do that after lows because lows are kind of a, a good uh, organic way to transition into full crouch. But for the full crouch mix up, which you do have, you've got the full crouch down forward 3, which is this uh, great knockdown low, uh, kind of fast for what it is, uh, very punishable though. And then what's really, really good about it is. I think you can still chain these at the wall, um, the second one being completely guaranteed uh, because of the wall. So at the wall if you get uh, this move you can do another one for free and then what a cheap way to sort of deal with people who don't uh, uh, know how to get off get off the ground properly is to do this, uh, do this and then do another one and then they stand up so you do another one and then the fourth one becomes guaranteed obviously because the first one hits the second one's guaranteed they can block the third one but if they eat the third one then the fourth one is guaranteed if you do a fifth one then the sixth one is guaranteed as long as the fifth one hits and so on so that's uh, like a, uh, uh, I used to call it putting them in the blender. You just put noobs in the blender at the wall, but that's uh, really, really good. And then, you know, for mids, uh, for while standing, I mean, you just have uh, everything. You've got the while standing four, one plus two. You've got the amazing layer while standing slash quarter circle. This is the quarter circle version, uh, three. 
uh, for the launcher obviously you got the wild standing too so uh, great great stuff but the low is there and that means that from full crouch you're a very dangerous uh, character okay uh, anything else we need to I mean I mentioned this move briefly when I talked about Oki this is a great little gap closing tool it's a safe mid that causes a knockdown uh, and uh, hits grounded opponents so that's kind of like not quite as good a version of what Katarina has for 443 but very very decent and I think you still can yeah you can hold down and that allow you to go into Bokuho stance which is this crouching crouching tiger hidden dragon style stance that Leo has uh, but yeah not super useful or anything that transition but it exists but the 443 by itself is a good Oki tool and gap closing tool that is vulnerable to uh, uh, horizontal movement Okay, uh, anything else? Mm. Okay, yeah, no, I think it's time to actually just go straight into and ta start talking about uh, stances. And the most important one that we need to talk about, and the reason Leo is such a good character in my opinion, is the King K stance. Mainly when it comes out of a uh, this string, which is back one. This is back one by itself, and this is back one four. Uh, this for extension when she goes into this weird high knee stance is can also be done by just pressing uh, forward 4. This is uh, Leo's King K knee stance uh, or just King K or knee stance whatever you want to call it if you don't like to try and pronounce I guess Chinese I guess it's what it is. Uh, the reason this is so amazing is that when Leo uh, hits or gets this move blocked she gets a free mix up uh, and being able to like pretty much any time you want just collect a free mix-up is a very very strong thing in Tekken it means that no matter what who you are facing who you are playing against if you are a new Tekken player and you're playing against one of the best uh, players in the entire world as long as you can get this thing out which is a, a very long-range good safe mid you know uh, you're gonna be able to mix them up uh, and as long as you can mix them up, there's a chance that you're going to launch them or deal a lot of damage to them. And so no matter what situation you are in, it, with Leo, you are in the game and you are able to play Tekken with your opponent. Always able to create mix-ups because of this fantastic stance. Uh, the way this works, the reason it is so good is that, well, first of all, the uh, back one by itself is a very long-range, good, powerful counter hit tool. I mean, look at the... It even has some evasive properties. It's a very, very good uh, counter tool and a solid fast mid. Uh, but it is punishable on block, uh, as far as I'm aware. But people will very rarely try and block punish it because a lot of the time you're going to use this uh, for follow up to go into King K knee. And when you're in King K, uh, okay, let's if if this four uh, gets uh, hit, uh, or sorry, if this four hits you have a massive amount of plus frames but if it gets blocked uh, you're at plus eight which is of course insane uh, I've looked up like a couple of different sources for frame data but as far as I can tell this is still a uh, plus eight on block and the reason for it is it's really interesting if you look at Leo and if you look at the um, when the, f the four extension hits if you listen for the sound you can see that at the very end of that animation, just when Leo's attack animation is about to end, the four hit comes out. And then Leo is already in her uh, stance, meaning that she can do, like, do a move right away. And that's why she's uh, able to uh, get this uh, plus eight on block. So on hit or block, you still get your mix up every time. This is amazing, and uh, like I said, the main reason I think Leo is considered such a good character because uh, her combo damage is like slightly below average, even though her wall carry is above average. Uh, her counter tools are, you know, okay-ish, but her uh, uh, but her mix-up potential is just really, really huge. So, uh, what options do you have out of King K Knee? Well, the first one and the main one that creates all of the mix-ups is King K Two which is this move. King K2 is a duckable high, uh, but it is a very decent uh, uh, spin and wall splat move that more importantly gives you a uh, combo on counter hit. I just turned on counter hit, right? Okay, so I need to hit with just the two, I guess. Yeah. So um, you get a counter hit uh, launcher. See if we can. How do you combo with this? See if I can remember. 
It is this, right? Yeah. Alright, so you get a counter hit launcher for the two. And because that two is so dangerous, and because it is a counter hit, it basically means that your opponent is not very likely to just start throwing out attacks after you've gone into King K. On block or hit, uh, them moving after King K is dangerous. So they will usually uh, remain blocking, uh, uh, which again strengthens the mix up potential of the string. Uh, so the two is a duckable high, and if you think that they are going to duck, your uh, mid options is, well, mainly the three. Uh, the 3 is kind of like a generic hop kick. I mean, it comes out at 20 frames instead of 15, and it gives you minus 13 on a block instead of 12, which would be standard for a hop kick. But because your opponent is just going to have to guess whether or not this hop kick is coming out, it doesn't matter what it has uh, in terms of impact frames. And uh, the difference between minus 12 and minus 13 on block isn't really significant, in my opinion. So your mid option is kind of just you get a hop kick, which means you can launch them again. And the combo for this, I mean, we're going to talk about combos later, but it's I think it's just a standing four into her, yeah, into her normal combo. So yeah, uh, so that's uh, the uh, main uh, mid option for your uh, mix up, and then the uh, low uh, option that you have is four, which is this cool little stomp that gives you good frame uh, advantage and. Uh, it's kind of, uh, it's not too unsafe on block. I think it gives you minus 12. Yeah, it gives you minus 12. So you got a nice little low option as well if you think your opponent is going to hesitate and stand there and you want to attack on the damage and keep your offense going. Collect that, you know, low and then maybe go straight into another one uh, or whatever. So yeah. So uh, those are like the main options that I want to highlight uh, off of King K. Uh, King K2 for the uh, duckable, uh, but really, really good and dangerous counter hit mid. Uh, three for the hop kick and four for the low, but then there is one very interesting other thing about this. Uh, because your opponent is going to hesitate a lot, what you can do out of King K uh, to create an even deeper mix-up is you can hold down forward, allowing uh, Leia to transition automatically into, if you look at this, this is Leia's roll dash, and if you hold down forward after King K, you can go uh, automatically into her roll dash. Now I say roll dash, I, just, I guess I should just uh, explain this quickly. Uh, this is normally known as a crouch dash in uh, Tekken, and a crouch dash is uh, performed by doing a quarter circle forward. And a lot of characters in the game have access to this. It's a very, very sort of standard uh, Tekken thing. Uh, but because there are uh, different kinds of crouch dashes, and the Mishima style crouch dash is usually referred to as a crouch dash, I like to refer to these as roll dashes, these that just, uh, you know, are, are normal generic crouch dashes. But when I say roll dash in any of my videos, this is what I'm referring to. And when I say crouch dash, I'm uh, typically referring to a Mishima style crouch dash. But that's just like uh, some generic term terminology that I have in my own head and not something you need to, uh, you know, uh, agree on. Just be aware that that's kind of a legend for how I express this. But King K down forward, uh, it goes into your... Um, uh, crouch dash and the thing about Leo that is so cool is even though a lot of characters have access to this generic crouch dash Leo has such good cool options out of hers that it's really just a very usable great great option So the main moves I want to highlight highlight out of this crouch dash uh, the first one is uh, Crouch dash one as you can see you can delay it uh, a lot or you can do it right away. This is a amazing little uh, low poke um, that is very, 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 very good for uh, many, many reasons. I mean, it closes the distance from way out here, allows you to nab, you know, the frame advantage and start offense. But more importantly, and this is so amazing, is that this will give you guaranteed stuff on counter it. Uh, namely, it gives you a guaranteed uh, while standing for one plus two. And uh, have a look at this damage right now. 54 damage is basically, I mean, we're fighting Kazumi right now. 54 damage is basically what Kazumi normally gets off of uh, one of her normal uh, like full full combos off of a generic launcher. And Leo just collects it with this counter hit little low. 54 damage, amazing. This low is uh, very, very, very good and one of the best options you have uh, out of your crouch dash. So King K down forward, cancels into this uh, crouch dash and the one is a great, great uh, option for the uh, low. 
Next uh, option I want to highlight out of the crouch dash is the 2-1. This is a very sort of long range, great gap closing tool. I, I mean, you saw how much uh, range I covered with it right there. But uh, it's a mid mid string that does a great chunk of damage. It's very safe. Uh, it gives you minus a 9 on block, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, minus 9, so you are completely safe. And this is just a very, very solid mid option. The option to do a chunky mid that is this dangerous, but still safe on block, means that this. Uh, mix up with the one becomes very powerful I mean if the mix up was between a un an unsafe mid and uh, uh, you know a normal low then this would be a lot uh, lot worse but the fact that the mid is safe uh, empowers the mix up and makes the mix up more solid uh, and then yeah the last option I want to highlight here uh, is the uh, uh, the uh, quarter circle uh, wa 3 plus 4 which is this move. And the reason I think this move is so good is, uh, I mean, you see those little, I, I always think of them as like sweat droplets. I don't know if that makes sense, but those little like uh, white uh, sparky things that come out of the move, that means that the move is homing, uh, meaning that this move is inescapable. It can't be uh, sidestepped or sidewalked, uh, which is great, of course. And then, uh, the uh, main thing about this move is that, okay, it is safe, uh, but it's also uh, uh, an amazing wall splatting tool. Meaning that, uh, like you saw right there, this is like a great, great option at the wall. Uh, so, yeah, and it is mid-mid again, which is really, really amazing. So, yeah, uh, the uh, quarter circle forward cancel has a lot of super interesting, super dangerous options. And... Uh, there it is. Uh, very, very, very good. So uh, you can, uh, when you're doing these back one for mix-ups, you can do the mix-up right away with something like that, or you can hold down forward to cancel into quarter circle forward, push your opponent at quite a distance against the wall, meaning you establish positioning and you can take the center of the octagon, so to speak, and then you can mix up from uh, full crouch. So that's just a, a sort of quick rundown on what I think are the most important moves uh, that Leo uses for her like main mix-ups. But there are there is more stuff to go into here. It's just that the video would become way too deep and way too long. But this is more than enough to get you started, in my opinion. Uh, I mentioned you know quarter circle three earlier. If you just want to do like a safe, very solid little uh, mid, and not do anything too crazy, the three is like a great option. And uh, yeah, the amazing. Uh, while standing for one plus two is there uh, as well. Uh, I I should I'm gonna do a separate video on uh, how to use um, crouch dashing correctly, but uh, I can just mention quickly uh, that uh, it's something I think you need to learn uh, if you're gonna play uh, Leo really. If you look right there, I'm doing a uh, right there. I'm doing a quarter circle forward, so a roll dash into. Uh, a while standing too, because this is Leo's while standing too, right? And the reason I am able to do a normal uh, quarter circle too, like I'm doing right here, and then sometimes if I want to, uh, do a... Uh, see if we can get it again on a control pad. Uh, while standing too, is that when you do a roll dash, uh, you can't do this, I think, when you're doing like the uh, automatic transitions, but... If you uh, do a normal manual uh, roll dash input and you do down, down, forward, forward, which is the normal input for a roll dash, you are going to get your roll dash moveset. But if you just do the down, down, forward and you skip the uh, forward input, your character is going to uh, uh, do while standing moves out of the roll dash instead. And this is kind of an advanced technique that is a little bit difficult to get used to. I don't play a lot of roll dash characters. I can do it reliably because I've practiced it uh, in Tekken Tag 2 when I played a lot of Leo. But uh, it is an advanced technique that I really uh, advise you to learn because if you're out here and you're doing like a roll dash and say you want to like whiff punish or something so you don't want to do that move, you want to do uh, that move. Uh, you need to be able to, to, to learn how to do that reliably. And it's a little bit finicky on a control pad, but it definitely works. But that was uh, just a quick digression on roll dashing in general. Uh, okay, so uh, now I would like to talk about uh, Bokuho stance. Bokuho stance is uh, manually done by doing a down 1 plus 2, like this. And the 
fun thing about Bokuho stance is that it's one of those stances that is it's actually not bad to just do it manually every once in a while. You don't have to transition into a move to get into Bokuho. You can just be out here and like do Bokuho and look, see what your opponent does. And if there's an opportunity to like uh, you know uh, punish them or anything, you can do do that from Bokuho. So say I'm out here and I do Bokuho and then you know uh, Kazumi does a standing four or something. I'm like oh great Bokuho too. And I launch for a massive amount of damage. Uh, but Bokuo can also be gone into from, from uh, a bunch of different moves. Uh, you can do uh, 4 4 3 hold down into Bokuo. You can do 4 3 into Bokuo. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, it's got a couple of interesting transitions, but I mainly like to use it from a distance like this and uh, uh, see what my opponent is going to do. I, I, like you can see that Leo has a lot of evasive properties uh, during this stance. Very, it's liable to whiff a lot uh, when you do this. Like your opponent's moves are liable to whiff a lot, I should say. Uh, and then you've got just amazing, amazing options uh, out of this stance. So the main ones I want to highlight is uh, most importantly, possibly the uh, Bokuo Three, which has had a, a huge buff uh, going into Tekken uh, Seven. This, it, as you can see, is a normal hit launcher, but it's also a uh, homing move, uh, which means it's great. The main thing you can do about this move is to, uh, I mean, the range is really good as well. The main thing you can do about this move if you're the opponent is obviously you can duck it, but ducking Bokuho is very dangerous, so that happens kind of rarely. So on hit you get the launch, but on block this gives you a completely insane minus nine, uh, meaning that... Uh, I mean, the it's it's just it's it's you all all the time. Your opponent can't do anything when they're at minus nine. So on block or on hit, this is a, a very very good option. You get a free mix up, and you can do whatever you want when you get it blocked, and you get a combo for good damage when you get a, a hit with it. So Bokuho uh, three is an amazing amazing move. If you can hit with this when your opponent's back is against the wall, they're going to be terrified. So yeah, it's a great great move. Uh, the other options that I want to highlight out of Bokuho uh, is the two that I showed you before. This is like your main mid mix-up, and again, this move is actually safe. You have all these great launchers that are safe with Leo, uh, which is a lot, a lot of fun. So, uh, yep, the uh, two. This is not plus nine, though. It's minus uh, nine, so uh, 18 frames worse, I guess, but still completely safe, which is uh, great. And obviously, good damage. It's mid, unduckable, and leads to... Uh, really really uh, solid damage and then uh, I guess the uh, last option that I want to mention out of uh, Bokuho that is uh, important in my opinion is you can actually do Bokuho into 4 this will transition into King K Knee give you your uh, plus 8 on block if it gets blocked and you can do the exact same mix-ups that you would do from your normal back to four or just forward for uh, King K mix-ups. So you can transition into King K from Bokuho like that. Uh, basically going into King K from a very evasive, like ducking down position like that. And just as normal, cancel into your uh, down forward uh, one full crouch and you can do, uh, sorry, crouch dash. And you can do your crouch dash slash roll dash mix-ups. So like that. It's so good. I mean, back in the day when Leo came out, uh, Leo was described as being kind of like a generic and simplish character with some some interesting depth to her. But I think if you look at characters like Kazumi and Shaheen and Claudia that we've gotten in this game, I mean, those are simple characters. Leo actually has a lot of stuff and a lot of stances. So in Tekken 6, she might have been a little bit of an easy character. In Tekken 7, I actually think she um, qualifies as quite complex. Not because Leo has changed, but because the relative complexity of characters in the game has been uh, heavily diluted. But uh, that's a digression. But check that out. I mean, Bokuho, Kinke, you're just doing all of these great uh, stance transitions with uh, Leo, right? And you need to be able to... Just like Bruce Lee said, you know, flow like water, my friend. It's all about uh, keeping the opponent guessing, uh, flowing between these great uh, stances, uh, and always keeping them guessing. And that's why I think being a good Leo player is going to take you some time. Because even her combos, they have this very, like, uh, certain flow to them. And there's a lot of crouch dashing in her game. Uh, and you need to, like, be able to do, uh, s like, nicely flowing moves out of this. But you also want to be able to, like, 
you know, get the while standing stuff out when you want to. But it's it's a very interesting and sort of cool and almost like beautiful uh, character design that I think is super interesting. So uh, that was a quick uh, intro to Bokuho. Uh, you can go into King K, you can launch with a safe mid, you can launch with a safe high, and it's uh, really, really good. It's even good at the beginning of the round. Uh, that's uh, Bokuho 1 2, by the way, which is like a chunky uh, mid that you can use. Uh, okay, and we talked about uh, quarter circle 1. We talked about quarter circle 2 1. Okay, so we talked about the quarter circle or. Uh, uh, crouch dash uh, slash uh, roll dash as well so uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put in a quick edit and then I'm gonna talk about some of her good launchers and stuff I mean uh, one thing I haven't mentioned that is uh, important with Ao is as you can see I'm doing uh, crouch dash cancels uh, creating crouch dash cancels with her right now and uh, you can see she, she covers a lot of ground when she's doing that. Uh, Leo has a good back dash. Leo has a uh, good movement overall. And that means that uh, she is good at whiff punishing. And so a lot of Leo, when you're not creating mix-ups with this, a very good thing that Leo can do is that she's a great whiff punishing character. And the main whiff punishing tool is this amazing down for two, mainly because it has great range. It's almost like I put this in the same category almost as Jack's down for two. It's like a very long range, very good down for two uh, that is uh, unfortunately punishable on block. Um, but uh, we're gonna like talk about it more in the uh, combo section that I'm gonna do next. I just want you to know that that's the reason I haven't brought up this super important move of Leo's uh, just yet. Uh, oh, no, there is one thing we need to talk about before that. I'm really, really sorry I've forgotten this. I'm going to talk about it more late, uh, later, but uh, this move. <laughs> obviously this move. Obviously, obviously this move. Leo's Falling Leaf, uh, down uh, uh, back 4-1, down back 4-1, is uh, an unseeable high damage knockdown low. I mean, completely unseeable. It's never going to get blocked if you're applying it correctly and you don't abuse it too much. And, uh, I mean, this is amazing having just a falling leaf option like this. And the reason it's so, so good is, uh, I mean, obviously it's good because anytime you think your opponent's being defensive and you want to collect a lot of damage with the low, you can just do this and it's going to work at certain ranges. It's going to give you a wall splat. But this means that just standing around this range in, the, in your opponent's face with Leo creates like an automatic mix-up. It's almost like when some characters are in full crouch and they have a big low like that and your opponent feels the pressure and feels mixed up. But Leo is just doing it to your opponent just by standing right there because at any time this amazing low can come out. And so it means that, you know, you've got mix-up just standing here because of the falling leaf. You've got mix-ups when you're crouching because of your uh, full crouch down 4-3. You've got mix-ups from your... Uh, uh, King K stance, which are amazing, and when you're back dashing, you've got great whiff punishing with moves like down for two. So, I mean, Leo really is the complete package, and I think this is why she's considered to be so so good. Uh, and it's not about combo damage, it's not about cheap moves, it's not about just abusing, you know, uh, Dragonov's while running two or Brian's orbital over and over. It's like uh, flowing, you gotta think, you gotta be on your toes, but it's uh, when played properly. Uh, and intuitively by a person who's familiar with the character and likes the character. It is possibly the strongest and most complete package in all of Tekken 7. But yeah, I'm just going to make a quick edit right now and we're going to talk about some combo stuff and some launchers. So hang on for just a second. Alright, so uh, let's talk about some launchers and combos and eventually some wall game with Leo. Uh, this is where it gets a little bit technical. Her combos are not necessarily difficult to perform. But I want you to be aware that when you start doing them, uh, if you're not used to like roll dashing in your combos and doing cancels and stuff, it's going to be a little bit finicky. But this is one of those things that I promise you, it is easy enough that anybody can learn how to do it. You just have to put the time in. Uh, but it's not uh, difficult. You just There's a little bit of a timing element to them as well, which uh, is something that just comes with uh, time, obviously. Uh, okay, so the first generic combo I want to show you that you're gonna gonna want to collect off of most of her launchers, but especially the uh, down uh, four two and the hop kick, which are her uh, main 15 frame tools. Uh, mainly use down four two in my opinion for the range because it's punishable uh, uh, and slightly sometimes I think so or maybe 16 frames, and then use the uh, hop kick obviously for uh, when you want a low crush. Um, 
you get the low crush property sort of tacked on there which makes the hop kick a great option as well hop kick uh, has standard hop kick frame rate that comes out of 15 and is minus 12 on block so uh, the combo uh, i'm just going to show it and then we're going to talk through it right uh so uh up until this point when we've done like uh, combos uh, on this stage in my tutorials we almost never reached the wall by the end of the combo but with Leia we comfortably reached the wall by the end of the combo because her wall carry is so good but just pretend that the wall wasn't there for now uh, what I did in the combo is I do a down 4-2 uh, I then do a 4-2 which is a very long reaching little 2 like that that you can do um, I then do uh, back 2-4, uh, which uh, which is this classic uh, you know move to go into King K. Just like when we did our mix-ups, I'm going to hold down 4 to cancel into the uh, crouch dash or the uh, roll dash. Out of the roll dash, I you have to wait until the roll dash is about half finished. You can't do it right away because then uh, you haven't covered enough distance and you're going to end up whiffing your follow-up. So you hold down forward, you, you go for like a little while, you do uh, roll dash 3, uh, you then spin with 4-2-4, four, four, which is the King K counter hit move that we talked about earlier. You then have to do a deep run up, and after you run up, this is uh, nice for Leo because uh, she doesn't have like a running 4 or anything. You can just run up and uh, keep holding the, the forward input down and then press 4 and you're going to get forward 4. You cancel forward 4 with another, another roll dash and you do a roll dash 1 plus 2, which is this shoulder, for the finisher. Uh, so, I mean, if that sounds a little bit all over the place, I mean, it's obviously a little bit more difficult uh, and out there uh, compared to like the most generic combos, but it's not as hard as it sounds. You're just going to have to practice it a little bit. So I'm going to show it one more time. All right. So uh, for the hop kick, you're going to do the exact same combo, only instead of doing the 4-2, uh, uh, for your uh, second input, you're going to substitute that for just a standing four. Uh, and I think the reason people do that is they get a little bit more damage. Yeah, it's like two more damage. But uh, otherwise, it's the exact same combo for the hop kick. Uh, so the hop kick uh, gives you a little bit more damage there, as you can see as well. But uh, just remember, you know, if you if you launch them with four, press the four. If you launch them with two, do the two. Uh, uh, easy to remember and not that difficult to execute. Uh, okay, so that's like your uh, most generic uh, combo options. And uh, I mean, you can like spin early with this for like conversions. Uh, or you could uh, conceivably do something like uh, skip the second input, go straight into this, or do that if you want to spin early. And you can do a wall conversion like that uh, and stuff. So yeah, conversions with Leo are uh, like very wild and very adaptable uh, and require sidestepping and stuff. So I'm not going to go too deep with that because it's just going to be uh, a little bit too much information. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, her sort of generic uh, combo. And then, if we're going to talk about some other good launchers that she has, uh, 4 4 uh, four, 3 is a good launcher. Uh, this is uh, a natural combo that is uh, minus 12 on block, uh, but you have the option to tack on a, a 4 extension, and she does this little uh, low at the end, meaning that a lot of people are going to hesitate to punish it. Normally, when it gets blocked, they will do if they're a half decent player and they know about the string they will do a quick duck to look for that low and when it doesn't come out they just backdash out uh, but this is a good gap closing tool and whiff punishing tool when you want to go in with a launcher uh, and it's unfortunately one of Leo's launchers when she's going to have to sidestep right to get the combo and she has a couple of these so you need to get a little bit comfortable with sidestepping in combos with uh, Leo but it's not uh, necessarily that difficult I'm not great at uh, uh, performing this because I don't uh, play Leo that much in this game. You know, I played her in like tag 2. Uh, but uh, let's see if we can perform it here. Okay, I uh, messed What? What's the ender? It's Okay, that's the ender, okay. Okay, one more time. 
Okay, so that was a good example of me not doing a deep enough roll dash. So you gotta chill with the roll dash and let it sort of let her cover space before you do your follow-ups in the roll dashes. Uh, so because this spins uh, during the launch ride, I, I don't get a, a spin during the combo, which is why I needed to make that conversion. But what I did was I launched, I did a deep sidestep uh, right, I then do the normal uh, back to four, cancel it into roll dash three, I then do a forward four, and cancel that into roll dash, and then for the combo ender, this is roll dash three, two, uh, uh, sorry, three, one, two, three, one, two. Roll dash three one two. It's this generic good little uh, combo ender with Leo that she has, and I think, yeah, you can also do this from while standing. So this works from while standing, and it works from roll dash. But it's uh, mainly used as a combo ender. Uh, so that's that combo. Okay, I'm amazing. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, I'm not. That's that's easy. I mean, I'm obviously joking. Don't don't get angry, please. <laughs> uh, okay, so the next thing uh, we should talk about. I mean, I talked about how amazing uh, this string is. So I guess we should show you some combo stuff with this. Uh, this thing by itself, back one, is a chunky counter hit tool. Uh, there are a couple of options you can do here. Some people, you know, like to spin like that in this combo. Uh, some people uh, do some other stuff. I like to do this. and just spin with the 4-4-4-3 four, four, uh, four, and then let's see how do we combo off this can I remember uh, I think you gotta do this actually yeah okay so that hits so it's back one uh, I spin with 4-4-4-3 four, four, uh, four, I do a uh, I spin with 4-4-4-3, four, 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 I then do uh, the, uh, what did I do? <laughs> uh, back 1-4 uh, as normal, cancel into roll dash, and then I do the normal roll dash 3-1-2 uh, that I showed you earlier. So that's the easy little combo that I use off of this, but you can do other stuff with, uh, you know, launch, and then do this again, and then spin like that, and then you can do, you know, all kinds of follow-ups. So, uh, yeah, that, that w but this would be my recommendation. This is what I think is the most consistent and the most just sort of easy to perform. Uh, and uh, the damage is there as well. So that's that. And then obviously this thing. Uh, you can do the exact same option. Uh, as uh, from the uh, normal back one. And that does not work, I think. Your generic combo does not work off of this, as, as far as I'm aware. So you have to like spin like that, or you have to uh, do it, uh, what I did in, in my version, which is the 4 4 4 3 for the spin. And again, you can see that this will, will uh, launch Kazumi at awkward angles. If you look at her legs after the spin right now. So that... Uh, sidestep right is going to be really important for consistently consistency a lot of the time uh, now uh, let's talk about uh, uh, Bokuho uh, 2 Bokuho 2 you get your normal generic combo but again the second hit you know off of down forward 2 you do the forward 2 off of up forward 4 you do the standing 4 and off of uh, Bokuho 2 you're gonna do a delayed hop kick uh, 4 um, so this is just you jump in the air and when you're in the air you uh, press the 4. So it's not a hop kick, it's a delayed hop kick. Uh, that's probably going to be your best option. I think you can also get the forward 3 right. Okay, so let's see what's, what's the best uh, damage. That's 37 and that's 36. Okay, so you want to do the delayed hop kick. So you do the delayed hop kick and then you just go into your uh, standard combo. Uh, so that's Bokuho 2. Um, she has this thing, which is her version of a backswing blow, which is a great little high, uh, kind of telegraphed and therefore duckable. But the best option off of this, as far as I know, is still forward three and then just generic combo again. So that's good. Uh, so that's that launcher. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. What else do I need to talk about? I think that might be it for like standard combo game with Leo. Uh, I'm going to mention quickly that up forward uh, 1-2, which is a weird input, very few characters have an up forward 1-2, but 
Uh, this move is uh, an alternative for like a 13 frame block punisher for her. I mean, I mentioned that she has this earlier. This is a lower damage option, but the great thing about this is it knocks your opponent uh, off and away uh, for wall splats. But uh, what's even better about it, uh, if you look at this, is that it's an amazing little uh, wall carry option. So wall carry uh, conversions with Leo uh, typically come in the shape of like you doing... Uh yeah, that was probably a little bit too close. Uh, but you can run up even, you know, very late in your combo. Uh, and you can get the up forward... Uh, let's see if I can just show it at least once off of something. Okay. Uh, yeah. Like that, and it's a very good option for like a wall carry conversion. They can use it any time during your combo uh, after a spin. But I think another option that you can do if you're a little bit more uh, used to Tekken inputs is you can cancel uh, because this is a uh, it's, uh, a little bit uh, unnecessary to teach you right now. Maybe if you're new, but uh, it's a up forward input. I mentioned you have to do up forward one too, and up forward inputs uh, will cancel. Uh, roll dashes so if i'm in a roll dash and i do this move i will cancel the roll dash and i have the option to do it out of the roll dash meaning that even during my roll dash i can use this for a wall conversion if i need to so i guess that would look something like okay i managed to me mess it up oh come on this isn't hard there you go yeah so you have that option as well, and that's just, uh, you know, I, I like to mention some wall conversion stuff because it doesn't really make sense to just teach you like the combo out in the open because so often in Tekken, I think half the time or more than half the time, you're actually looking for the wall, and so you need to know how to sort of adapt to that, right? Uh, okay, so let's go over to the wall and talk about some wall stuff uh, with Leo. Uh, Leo has a wealth of very good wall splatting options uh, for her wall splat. I mean, she's very, very good at wall splatting the opponent, and she's super, super good uh, at the wall in general. Another reason this is such an amazing character. The main wall splatting tool that I use is the Up Forward 3. This is a, a safe, low crushing mid uh, that wall splats. Uh, and those properties uh, tell you that this is just a premium, premium option. The range is really good as well. You can do it from way uh, out like uh, here and you'll still get it. Uh, so this is like the main tool that I use, but there are some other really important options. Down forward 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2 is an amazing layout move. This is not only used at the wall, but also used out in the open. And if you look, I'm going to delay the string. You saw that big delay I can do? She just waits with her arms out and then boom. And this is hit confirmable. If you're a, a Tekken player already, you know about hit confirms. If you're not, I'm just going to tell you quickly. What this means is that this is a natural combo. Meaning that if I hit the, with the first hit, the second hit will also hit guaranteed. She can't block the second hit if, if the first hit connects. Uh, but uh, how do I know if the first hit is going to connect? Well, if I do this little delay and I look... I can sort of see, oh, it hit, and then I do the follow-up. Uh, there's just enough time for me if I'm fast, if I've got good reaction speed, to, to say, okay, I'm going to do this move, I'm going to look and see if the first hit connects, and if it does, then I'm going to do the extension. Like that. So right now, I am visually hit confirming this. This is something you need to train yourself to do if, you're, if you want to be a great Leo player. Uh, you can't just do this string like that. You want to look and then hit confirm and then do the extension because the extension is punishable, right? But this means that this is uh, if you hit confirm properly, you just do this. Okay, it didn't hit, so I'm not going to do the extension. Do it again. Oh, it didn't hit. I'm not going to do the extension. Oh, it did hit. That time. Okay, I do the extension and I get my wall combo. That means that it's for advanced players probably the best wall splitting tool that Leo has, especially because when you do both hits, it does a great amount of damage. Next option I want to mention is the down forward 3. This is a move that she basically shares with Shaheen. I think his is very similar. 
the reason this is such a good move is that it's a mid homing move that walls flats and homing moves uh, are good at the wall because when your opponent's back is against the wall they want to move horizontally to get away from the wall and when they're moving horizontally you hit them with the homing move and you collect your uh, uh, wall combo right uh, so those are like the three main tools that I want to mention. Is there something I'm forgetting? I mean, Leo has this move, which is her 442. And 442 is uh, a great little uh, width punishing tool. It's very fast. It has amazing range and it will wall splat from afar. So if you've knocked your opponent away with like a combo and you're out here and you want to interrupt them or uh, width punish them for a wall splat, 442 is a good option as well. Uh, Alright, and so what Leo does for her wall combo, I mean the main option that I, I think most people use, it's not what I use because I I used to play Leo back in the day when she had other stuff that is not as good anymore, but it's still what I use, but it's uh, she does this, uh, which is... I mentioned before that it, you know you do one uh, you know do back one four I mean just back one four like I told you it's her main like mid stuff it's her main mix up it's her main like combo tool and like it's her main wall combo like this is uh, such a good string it's like everything for Leo it cancels into stanzas and everything this is so good this is literally the heart and core of the character uh, I just want to reiterate that this string is so good uh, for Leo. But uh, I mentioned that the King K3 is uh, this hop kick. You can actually do a 3-4 and she does this double hop kick. When you do mix-ups in the open, I don't really use that because uh, if I just do the 3, I can do my generic hop kick combo. But you can do the 3-4 for your uh, wall combo and that's going to hit consistently. So it's uh, back 1-4 uh, and then King K3-4. Uh, let's do it again. Okay, that, that time I was a little bit too slow, right? You gotta be kind of fast. You can't wait to do the extension here and be patient like you want to be with your roll dashes. You actually need to do the uh, the King K3-4 fast. Okay, that doesn't give you anything this close. Um, okay, and then the other option that you can uh, use is Leo has this string from uh, while standing. This is while standing uh, one uh, for one which is used to be her like main wall spine tool from back in the day. So uh, like legacy Leo players like to do a down jab to go into full crouch and then collect uh, this string. And I mean you can do, this is uh, not something you need to know, but you can do like stuff where you uh, do uh, uh, full uh, roll dash cancels into this move and stuff for the wall combo. But I'm going to be honest with you, just stick with... Uh, uh, back 1-4, uh, King K3-4, or if you want to, let's compare the damage actually. Okay, that's 50. And that's 54. Okay, so your highest damage option is going to be uh, back 3-4, hold uh, down forward, roll dash, um, roll dash 1 plus 2, which is that shoulder. Uh, yeah, that's 54, so that's better damage. The reason people don't use this as much as they use the King K3 for is that uh, it can cause these awkward like cross-up situations where your hitboxes you know, change change space and you uh, lose your positioning and stuff. But it's if you can learn how to deal with that when it happens, I, I'm honestly going to go out on a limb here and say I think this is your best option because I think that uh, e extra 4 damage is significant enough that there's a reason to use this. Um, and it's uh, really easy to perform as well, so I like that. Yeah, I like the crouch dash down forward, uh, uh, sorry, uh, down forward, uh, hold down forward, roll dash, one plus two option. Sorry, I've been talking for a little bit too long. Uh, okay, so that's like uh, your uh, main wall combo stuff. I guess I should mention as well that this is Leo's power crush and it's another good wall spotting tool that you can use. Like, you know, jabbing and harassing your opponent like up here and then when they are tired and they want to do something, you blow them up like that and you get your uh, wall combo. Uh, Alright, so the last thing I'm going to mention before we wrap this up, uh, let's think, have I, have, have I forgotten something really important with Leo? That works Boku of 3 for the wall spot as well. Uh, that works, like I told you as well, uh, when I talked about that move. Amazing. I mean, so many good options for the wall splat. Just insane. 
Okay, yeah. So the last thing I want to mention is that uh, you mean I mean you always want to know your uh, command grabs because they are harder to break in this game. I always mention this in my tutorials. And Leo has one of my favorite throws actually. I have never used the option to reverse positioning with your opponent in this uh, uh, version, but let's see if we can can we do that. Aite no muki. Does this work? No. Player. Down, down, no. Like if we can, if uh, if we can do this, it doesn't really matter. But let's see if uh, this is just screen options, right? This is like throws. Uh, Alright, I have to look at how to use that option too. Like, what I wanted to do right now it was I wanted to change the positioning so that my back was against the wall like Kazumi and she was standing in front of me. Uh, but I don't need to do it to explain what I want to explain. Uh, you've got a move called, uh, or the uh, input is 4 forward 1 plus 2, which is this super cool little throw. 4 forward 1 plus th uh, 2. Uh, good range, you know, because it comes out of the dash. And uh, 40 damage, a great little throw, but the, what's interesting about this throw is that if your back is against the wall and you hit with this, this will cause a high damage wall spot. Uh, so if you're uh, against the wall and you're being pressured with Leo, if you can get this throw in, not only do you get away from the wall, you actually do an insane amount of damage with a high damage wall combo with Leo. I mean, just this throw, like you can see, does 40 damage. A 40 damage wall spot is really, really high, and then you do like, you know, that for the follow-up, and you're gonna have... Uh, you know, taken like half your opponent's life bar, uh, stolen the positioning, and now you're in an okay situation at the wall. Okay, so the last two things I just want to mention that I feel that I forgot in the main part of this tutorial is the fact that this move exists. This was uh, added in FR, which is why I didn't remember to talk about it, but it's uh, up forward 3 plus 4. It's Leo's orbital. It only gives a launch on counter hit, but um, it's not used for its uh, launch properties really. It's more of an okie tool because it will hit the opponent when they're grounded and so this is a very very good tool for Oki. It also crushes those obviously so great for uh, pressuring people who are getting up off the floor. And then uh, the other thing that you need to know about is uh, the fact that this move that I talked about uh, down and forward uh, 3 plus 2 uh, on counter hit can give you a completely guaranteed full crouch down forward 3. So those are the last two things that I feel that I forgot to mention. That's going to wrap up this tutorial, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I can't recommend this character enough. Underexplored, but simultaneously uh, so, so strong and really fantastic and fun to use. So definitely check her out. Um, that's going to be it for this time, guys. Uh, next time I'm going to do, if I don't get uh, a lot of requests for anything specific, probably go with Shaheen or Lars. But if there's anything else you would rather love to see, just please let me know. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.